exploration of the universe has borne some fascinating blossoms over the past few decades. The experts have now succeeded in adding almost 5,000 exoplanets to the star maps. These are planets that are outside of our solar system and are gravitationally bound to another star. The search for these strange cosmic worlds is always subject to a central question. Is the newly discovered celestial body possibly habitable? While astronomers haven't yet been able to detect extraterrestrial life, let alone make contact with an alien civilization, other people have a completely different point of view on this. This not only means that there are other intelligent life forms in the universe, but also that hundreds of pieces of evidence of their existence have already been found. Even more, the corresponding beings are said to have been visiting our blue home planet for thousands of years and have come into open contact with the people of antiquity. In today's video, we'll show you what this fascinating thesis is all about in detail. Before we get started, be sure to hit that like button and ring the notification bell for more videos. Also, stick around until the end to learn something otherworldly about our home planet that you probably didn't know before. The Secret Gods of the Sumerians it's March 23, 1843. While archaeologists in Iraq are busy searching for relics from a millennia-long past, a group led by French explorer Paul Emile Bota uncovers the ruins of a gigantic Assyrian palace. A closer examination shows that the remains of the ancient building are adorned with countless Sumerian cuneiform inscriptions. The translation of the inscription should in turn bring to light a very mysterious story. Accordingly, the records told of a powerful civilization that came from another world and paved the way for earthly life in the first place, the Anunnaki. Within Mesopotamian mythology, the Anunnaki embody the gods of the underworld opposed to the gods of heaven, the so-called Igigo. However, the original term used by the ancient Sumerians for these supernatural creatures simply meant the people of the sky. This name in turn alluded to the firm belief that the Anunnaki were linked to the stars. In the role of gods, these creatures are said to have created man and determined his appearance and tasks. The history of our species got off to a bloody start. After one of these deities had sacrificed itself, their blood was mixed with clay to form a modeling compound from which the first human being was ultimately formed. Visually, however, the Anunnaki themselves had very little to do with the human inhabitants of Earth. Within the Sumerian texts, they were described as creatures with shining eyes, which evoked supernatural feelings with their divine aura. What initially seems like an exciting but purely fictional story was to become a real issue by the 1970s at the latest, after the pre-astronaut Zachariah Stitchin had studied the Sumerian cuneiform tablets for three decades, he published a book entitled The Twelfth Planet. The work tried to put the backgrounds of the Sumerian gods in an earthly, or rather in an extraterrestrial context. But according to the American writer, what was the story behind the legendary Anunnaki? If you think we have tons of high-tech gadgets today, think of this. Yes, the smartphone in your pocket is far more powerful than any computer or technology that was available 30 or 40 years ago. But think back to the dawn of humanity, a time of cavemen and cave paintings. During this time, there was a group of humans that were able to communicate with each other using nothing but carved text that they created on their own. They were able to carry out full conversations and keep track of payments and debts using nothing more than a clay tablet and a stone. Pretty amazing, right? To put this into perspective, the ancient Egyptians are often believed to be one of the most advanced human civilizations to ever live. We have reason to believe they were using running water and other forms of plumbing, and they managed to build pyramids that are ridiculously huge. They did all of this with hand tools and machines they invented out of raw metal, sticks, and rope. But get this, the Sumerians were doing all of this at least 2,000 years before Egypt was formed. 
The Sumerians were also the original inventors of the wheel, storage facilities, irrigation systems that could hold water, government, as well as money and loans. The Sumerians were met with countless difficulties throughout their lives and, for the most part, they were at the mercy of nature to make sure they survived. They faced countless droughts over the years, which is likely what led them to develop ways of holding water in large reservoirs, then watering their crops with it during times of no rain. They settled around the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, and just like the Egyptians, they would use the sky, sun, moon, and stars to develop a very basic calendar. This would help them understand when they needed to plant crops and when they needed to harvest them. They would also be able to predict droughts or periods of heavy rainfall so that they could adjust their agriculture to fit what Mother Nature had in store for them. To take things even further, the Sumerians would also establish the first metropolis in the world, known as Uruk. After this, they would establish Babylon, which remained one of the most important cities in the world for thousands of years. The History of the Anunnaki Previous interpretations had still claimed the Anunnaki to be divine beings who came from a supernatural world intangible to humans. However, Sitchin put forward an almost unbelievable thesis in this regard. In his books, he claimed that by translating the Sumerian cuneiform texts, he had found the true origin of this mystical species. Accordingly, these would be real creatures that once inhabited the planet Nibiru. In fact, the ancient cuneiform writing leaves a lot of room for interpretation in this regard. The texts do not clearly clarify whether Nibiru is a deity or a celestial object. The only thing that is certain is that Nibiru appeared again and again in the night sky in the stories and was closely connected to the stars or planets. Conventional researchers therefore see Nibiru as a moving celestial object that was misinterpreted by the Sumerians. Jupiter, Venus, or Halley's Comet are traded as possible candidates. However, if one follows the explanations of the convinced pre-astronaut Sitchin, Nibiru embodies a far-flung planet in the solar system that hasn't yet been tracked down. Around 430,000 years ago, however, the home world of the Anunnaki is said to have been confronted with ever-increasing environmental problems. In the end, the alien species had no choice but to leave Nibiru and migrate to Earth. Before this cosmic move was fully accomplished, however, some Anunnaki pioneers invaded our blue home planet, where they created man as slave laborers. From then on, mankind was doomed to work in mines on behalf of his creators and to look for gold and other precious materials. When it finally came time for the Anunnaki to migrate to Earth, the massive pyramids in Egypt would have served as landing aids for the extraterrestrial spaceships. Over time, the Anunnaki Anunnaki are said to have begun to mix with humans and continue to multiply in this way. About 13,000 years ago, another devastating flood is said to have swept countless people to their deaths. As a result, there was a break between the Earthlings and the Anunnaki, who were worshipped as deities, which culminated in bloody wars. Reptilian Shapeshifters Zachariah Sitchin wasn't the only pre-astronaut who believed in the real existence of the Anunnaki. However, not all interpretations from the world of this parascience drew a uniform picture. According to this, the conspiracy theorist David Icke is firmly convinced that the ancient Sumerian deities would actually embody reptilian shapeshifters who, to make matters worse, still live unrecognized among us. The aim of this extraterrestrial species, which originated from a planet in the constellation of the dragon, is therefore the infiltration of humanity and the establishment of the often cited New World Order. While we usually place the corresponding lizard creatures in the realm of science fiction or fantasy, people like Ike actually believe that the reptilian aliens really exist and that they already control many countries on our globe. Can you still remember the tremors that Angela Merkel suffered repeatedly on official occasions in the summer of 2019? 
Some people who believe that terrestrial reptilian politics are actually being controlled by extraterrestrial reptilians believe that the Chancellor's tremors were not medical, but technical in nature. Apparently, playing the national anthem would have disturbed the frequency with which the lizard creatures would have remotely controlled Merkel. What do you think of such theories? Write us your thoughts on this topic in the comments. Unsolved Mysteries Assuming that the ancient Sumerian texts that speak of the Anunnaki have no real basis, how do we explain the numerous unsolved mysteries that have haunted these ancient people from time immemorial? Although the Sumerians are generally regarded as the first people to make the step to high civilization, it's still not known where the inventors of cuneiform writing, bureaucracy, and the pioneers of artificial irrigation actually came from. To this day, experts are still debating whether the Sumerians first immigrated to their later homeland in southern Mesopotamia, or whether this was their ancestral home. Incidentally, the term Sumerians was completely foreign to the members of this fascinating ethnic group. They called themselves Sagiga, which translates as the black-headed ones. The name that's still in use today didn't appear until a much later epoch, when the old Babylonian rulers began to refer to themselves as the kings of Sumer. A look at the inner complexity underlying the Sumerian social order in the 3rd millennium BC could quickly give rise to the suspicion that the people were generations ahead of their time. The economic system at that time stipulated that not every inhabitant only worked for himself, but handed in the crops he had cultivated and harvested to the temple and made them available there for the general public. As far as we know, the administrative problems that arose from this type of storage led to the invention of writing. From then on, it was possible for the Sumerians to handle the administration, which had previously been done with seals and clay fillings, much more easily. The proto-cuneiform developed for this purpose was to eventually spread beyond the ranks of the Sumerians, where it was adapted and further developed by many other peoples. Particularly noteworthy, although the Sumerians were comparatively poor in raw materials, they were to quickly achieve a very high standard of living. This was mainly due to their extraordinary trading skills. The clay pots, domesticated animals, and grain of the Sumerians were so popular that these goods were even exported to India, Lebanon, and Iran. Convinced pre-astronauts believe, of course, that the Sumerians didn't make this groundbreaking transition to advanced civilization alone, but were able to rely on the secret knowledge revealed to them by the divine Anunnaki. Is humanity as old as we think? Many scientific textbooks will lead you to believe that humans are hundreds of thousands of years old. However, the evidence we've found doesn't support this theory. According to various researchers and advanced dating techniques, modern humans would have only been on Earth between 10,000 and 6,000 years ago. There's a possibility that cavemen and apes could have walked the Earth before then, but there's a significant leap in human genetics that cannot be explained yet. For this reason, the oldest modern humans with DNA that's similar to our own could have only existed for about 10,000 years. This opens up so many possibilities about the races of pre-humans or animals that would have roamed the Earth before modern humans were ever brought into the picture. At the moment, we simply don't have enough evidence or data to definitively say when modern humanity began. However, by all means, the data seems to suggest that we've only been around for a few thousand years, though there were obviously other beings and creatures that we can't explain that have roamed the Earth for millennia. The Anunnaki and Humans This leads us to the theory of the missing link that would explain the sudden jump in human history that led from us being mindless apes to modern humans that are capable of complex thought. Some researchers and historical documents from the Sumerians suggest that the Anunnaki genetically altered mankind, potentially mating with early humanoid creatures and thus created humanity as we know it. This theory says that the Anunnaki grew angry with the work that was 
being done on Earth, so they created a new breed of servants that would continue their mining operations. They say that the god Enki was the designer behind this new breed of human, and that he named his new creation Adamu, which would obviously explain the creation of Adam and Eve in the Bible. Adamu would have been a prototype human, with Eve being the follow-up human that was capable of reproduction. The theory claims that most of the Anunnaki wanted to leave humanity behind, but that Enki was incredibly pleased with his work. The Anunnaki knew that a great flood and other natural disasters were on the horizon, but Enki would do everything he could to teach humanity how to overcome these struggles, instructing several humans how to build large ships to survive. If you haven't caught on already, these stories directly tie together with stories from the Bible that have been circulating for countless years. The theories say that Enki is an Anunnaki who desperately wants humanity to prosper, while Enlil wants to see them fail, thus tying Enlil directly to the devil. This mysterious 12th planet known as Nibiru has never been discovered, and it's possible it never even existed. According to translations of the clay tablets, the planet will only circle the Earth's orbit once every 3,600 years. They say that the arrival of Nibiru will be felt by the increasing number of storms and violent natural disasters that will take place as it nears our planet. All right, folks, now your opinion matters. What do you think of the fabled Anunnaki? Can you understand why some pre-astronauts believe that extraterrestrial creatures actually exist? Or do you even believe that mysterious creatures exist? Let us know your thoughts, suggestions, and feedback on today's post in the comments below. If you enjoyed our detour into the mysterious world of the Anunnaki, please give us a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to stay up to date from now on. Finally, please take a look at the other videos on our channel, which we've linked for you in the credits. Thank you for your interest, have a great one, and see you next time.